Hello, this is the System Slayer, and welcome to episode 1 of the GitLab CI series. In this episode, we will go over a high-level overview of what continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment are, and how they play into your project. This is an introductory video designed to help you grasp the CI CD concepts so you won't have to follow along on your machine. Just sit back and enjoy. Let's get started. Let's start by defining the three terms we have here on the screen. First, continuous integration. Having continuous integration configured means that we have a set of automated tests that run every time we make a change to the application on either the master branch or on a development branch. The keyword here is automated. These tests should run anytime we push some code to GitLab without having to trigger them manually. Having tests execute automatically each time we make a code change helps us catch bugs early, and this is the main benefit of configuring continuous integration. Second, continuous delivery. Once our continuous integration checks pass, we should have the option to deploy our code. When we configure continuous delivery, we define a set of scripts that take care of deploying our code for us. However, these scripts are not executed automatically. We must manually start the execution of the deployment scripts ourselves. You can think of continuous delivery as deployment at the push of a button. Finally, continuous deployment. Continuous deployment is the automated version of continuous delivery. Under continuous deployment, our scripts that take care of deploying code for us are automatically started after our continuous integration checks pass. No manual input required. Pipelines are the main idea behind the CI-CD methodology. The basic pipeline architecture in GitLab usually consists of three stages. The build stage, the test stage, and the deploy stage. The build stage is a setup stage that lays out the groundwork required by the following two stages. The test stage is where our continuous integration checks take place. The deploy stage is where our deployment scripts would run. The deploy stage executes automatically under continuous deployment and it executes manually under continuous delivery. Of course, these stages execute in a sequential manner. Each of these stages can have any number of jobs associated with them. A job is essentially a script, a piece of code that you would like to run during a particular stage. Under the basic pipeline architecture that GitLab provides, jobs can execute concurrently for a particular stage but all jobs for a particular stage must complete before the jobs for the next stage may begin. If you're wondering what is responsible for the execution of these jobs, the answer is runners. A runner is a machine that has GitLab runner software installed and running on it. Runners automatically begin picking up jobs when a pipeline is triggered. GitLab provides some runners for you, but you can also set up your own runners. Let's now go over a typical CI workflow. Let's say you're working on an application and you have some code to submit. You push your feature branch changes to GitLab, which causes GitLab to automatically inspect your CI configuration and trigger the appropriate pipeline for your feature branch. In this case, we have a two-stage pipeline defined to trigger upon changes to any feature branches. As soon as our pipeline is triggered, our runners will begin to take jobs associated with our pipeline. As our runners execute jobs, they will send the output to GitLab in real time. This means that you can go to gitlab.com on any browser and view your jobs running in real time. As our runners finish the jobs associated with each of the stages of our pipeline, we will begin seeing green check marks on gitlab.com. One green check mark for each of the stages of our pipeline. Let's say that our teammate goes to gitlab.com and sees that we have a feature branch that has passed all CI checks and is ready for review. Our teammate reviews our code and merges it into the project's master branch. This causes GitLab to again automatically inspect our CI configuration and trigger the appropriate pipeline for the master branch. In this case, our CI configuration defines a three-stage pipeline for the master branch. Let's assume that this project uses continuous deployment instead of continuous delivery. As before, our runners begin to take jobs for each of the stages of our pipeline as soon as the pipeline is triggered, and this time we will see three green check marks on gitlab.com once all the jobs are done since this pipeline has three stages to it. Since we assumed that this project uses continuous deployment, our code would have been successfully deployed once the pipeline completed. The only real manual input required in this case was our teammate approving and merging our code to master. Afterward, 
our code was automatically tested and deployed. If we had been using continuous delivery instead of continuous deployment, we would have had to trigger the deploy stage manually by clicking a button on GitLab.com. Now you have a high level understanding of the CI-CD methodology and how it plays into your project in GitLab. In the next video, we will be going over how to set up our very own runner. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new content. Your feedback is highly appreciated as well, so please leave a comment below. See you next time. Slayer out.